guys, welcome back to My Kitten Reads. I'm Eleanor and this is my October wrap up video in which I read eight things in October, which is not bad considering I spent most of the month trying to wade my way through things I didn't want to read for university. So yeah, eight, eight is not bad. Um, so I started the month with a couple of ebooks. So I finished reading Frederica by Georgette Heyer. So this is my third Georgette Heyer novel. Uh, it took me a little bit to get into because I was a bit distracted, but yeah, eventually I got through it and I quite enjoyed it. Um, not quite as much as The Grand Sophie, but in Frederica, um, the eponymous hero, uh, Frederica herself, she has brought her younger siblings to, she considers herself on the shelf, has brought her younger siblings to London for the season, it's a Regency romance, um, in order to launch her beautiful little sister on the ton to find her a good husband um, but she knows she needs an entry point into society and so she calls on an old friend of her father's who's a distant connection by marriage who's a rake basically he's nobility and he's a rake and he has his flirtations and his little relationships but the entire ton knows that he doesn't actually care about anything but she manages to actually convince him to help and to sponsor uh, her and her sister and he ends up finding himself interested in her little brothers and interested in, of course, Federica. But she can't say it because she's not looking out for a husband for herself. She's looking for a husband for her sister. And so romantic shenanigans ensue. So that was a fun read. Um, I did enjoy it once I really got into it. Um, so that's my third Georgia Hire. So, you know, this year's been a bit... Bringing in the romance. Um, and then I read, I suppose technically another romance, I read a, another Pride and Prejudice variation, not by Jan Rowland. This one's by Sydney Salia, um, who I have read some previous books from before. Um, and it was called An Unconventional Education. And in this one, it takes, it, got, it takes the fact that Jane and Lydia, the eldest and the youngest Bennett sisters, are... Uh, a, most like their mother in looks, and B, her favourites, and takes it to the extreme. So essentially, because the middle three daughters get ignored by their mother all the time, and in this particular version of the story, Mr. Bennett is, he knows his health is failing, a wealthy widowed neighbour asks to adopt the middle three and give them an education, an unconventional education where they can learn anything they want. Um, and so the story, I mean, the end game tends to be pretty much the same for Lizzie and Darcy. Um, if I remember correctly, I think this one might have been one where Jane did not end up with Bingley, but I'm not sure. Um, these ones do turn up occasionally. But essentially, the ladies get a very unconventional education. Um, and everyone ends up living happily ever after. Uh... So that was fun as well. Um, then, then I finished The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. This was one of my uni texts for the two-week module on Holocaust fiction. Um, I know Booktube in general loves The Book Thief. I do not love The Book Thief. I really struggled with The Book Thief. I did finish it, despite the fact that I really wasn't enjoying it. Um... I think a lot of it is to do with the fact that I'm just not interested in fiction about the Holocaust. Um, I find it too painful to read. Like, that's the kind of thing that for me is, is for history. It is, like, I understand why people write novels about World War II and about the Holocaust. Like, we discussed this in class. But I am not comfortable reading about it in a fictional sense. So I struggled with this a lot. I didn't really connect with any of the characters. I found um, the constant interruptions of the little bold sections where death has like direct thoughts um, as narrator. I found them really, really ups not upsetting, like just unsettling. Like I couldn't really get into it. Uh, and there were some scenes, there were some scenes particularly involving the Jews marching through town. 
that I felt physically ill while reading. So I know a lot of people really love The Book Thief. It's not for me. So unfortunately, that was not a good read for me. But then, of course, the readathon, uh, Dewey's 24-hour readathon turned up and I actually read a lot of stuff that I really, really enjoyed. So I finally got around to reading Winter's Tale by Nike Silway, illustrated by Shauna O'Meara. Um, this is the first 12th Planet Press uh, children's book in their Titania imprint. Um, and it's a very sweet story about a kind of, um, I think, an agendered child. So one that doesn't actually identify with either of the two binary genders. Um, so non-binary, I guess. Um, and their search for a home and a family. Um, somewhere where they can belong, essentially. And there are a whole bunch of diverse characters along the way. And there's a little bit of magic as well. So um, this is a really sweet, fun, diverse, uh, hopeful children's story, which I really recommend. Then I also read Cry as War by Nina Varela. So this is the first, and I believe it's a duology, and I think the second book came out in September. Um, and it's kind of a fantastical not really science fiction -y, but kind of essentially it's a it's a fantasy world where alchemy is a thing and at some point in the past it's old timeline in here and i do apologize if you can hear my computer it's being loud sorry um but a queen who was barren asked her alchemists to make her a child and they managed it and therefore making the first automate automate and then the whole bunch of stuff happened and Autumn May ended up taking over the country, taking over the world, basically. Um, um, and humans are now second class citizens. So this is a, a story told from essentially two perspectives. One is the perspective of the heiress to the current Autumn May ruler, um, who has more empathy than she possibly should have towards the humans. And a human girl who is looking for revenge for her family who were killed by Autumn during a raid on their village and is part of the human rebellion. Um, one is a servant, the other is a princess. Yes, it's a little queer romance. There's a little bit of, it's not like the main thing, like, but they are definitely attracted to each other. So, um, so the main characters are essentially queer. Um, but of course, get to the end, things don't necessarily run smoothly because they are on opposite sides, no matter how much they sympathize and empathize with each other. So I am actually really want to read the second book of this so I can find out how it all ends. But I really, I, I think I rated this like five stars on Goodreads because I, I honestly, I just read right through it. I really enjoyed it. So that's Cry as War by Nina Varela. Um, then next on my list, I read this little book, which is The Frost Fair Affair by Tansy Ran Roberts. This is the second in her Teacup Isles magical novella series. Um, so uh, we meet Neem again. This is after her previous adventures. Um, she's now in the capital city for winter trying to drum up support for her uh campaign to make ladies traveling by portal socially acceptable because currently ladies have to rely on boats and sleighs and stuff like that whereas men can just portal anywhere they want um and things go a bit haywire and there's murder and espionage oh dear so <laughs> And the occasional glass hedgehog, because why not? Uh, yeah, so this is Tansy's usual fun, frivolity, witty banter, a uh, bit of romance and a bit of magic and a bit of, you know, manners as well. So I love this series so much. Definitely loved this one. Then I read, also read The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, Volume 6, Who Run the World? Squirrels! 
So in this one, our lovely squirrel girl, uh, Doreen, get, has, it starts with her taking an ethics seminar, an ethics in computing, computer engineering seminar, and thinking that the professor, the lecturer, the guest lecturer is great, and they have a meeting, and it turns out this lecturer has discovered that she is squirrel girl, and can, knows that she can speak to squirrels, and wants to give her backing, because she can also speak to animals. Doreen thinks, wow, this is fantastic. Yeah, it doesn't go the way that Doreen thinks it's going to go. So, but it's fun. It's Squirrel Girl. I always love a Squirrel Girl comic. And then the final thing that I read and finished for October was I reread Jane Austen's Persuasion. Uh, I was needing a little bit of comfort um, while I was reading The Book Thief. So I just picked it up as a Jane Austen that I had not reread yet this year um, and I finished it during the readathon uh, and this is of course the tale this is one of Jane Austen's gentler tales and um, probably one of her more mature tales um, because Anne our main character Anne Elliot is older than most of Jane Austen's characters she's kind of on the shelf she had a romance when she was young that did not end well and now she's being put in the situation where she is meeting Frederick, her young man, again. And her heart has never stopped loving him, but it was like six years ago or eight years ago. And she's, you know, just trying to, trying to behave respectably and not be hurt when he doesn't, you know, pay much attention to her. And the usual romantic shenanigans ensue. So that was all the things that I read in October. Um, I have today submitted my final essay, which means that for the rest of the year, I can read whatever I want. Yay! I'm so excited. Um, there are a few of my yearly goals that still need working on, um, which may direct my reading plans, but essentially I don't have any awards to read for. I don't have university to read for. I can read what I want. So... Hopefully, um, November will have a lot of really good reads in it. I hope. I'll see you all again really soon. Bye.